Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sean Purgal. I'm a manual osteopath and today I want to speak with you about treatment differences between different type of health professionals that use hands-on manual therapy services such as chiropractors, osteopaths, manual osteopaths, naturopaths, uh, physiotherapists and uh, physical therapists, naturopaths and massage therapists. Uh, grandfather of many of the manual, uh, manual therapy health professions uh, and itself osteopathy has originated from the Cherokee and Shawnee tribes healing arts and body works. Dr. Andrew is still fond of osteopathy, worked for 20 years or uh, over 140 years ago uh, in uh, Shawnee Tribes Reservation land and he got introduced to the Cherokee Tribes uh, body works and healing arts. Uh, he removed the spiritual aspect of it, the botanical me uh, medicine aspect of it, focus on the physical medicine part of it and uh, uh, introduced that as a profession of osteopathy uh, to the public and then uh, uh, well, it's uh, one of uh, his first students was Dr. David Daniel Palmer, the founder of uh, chiropractic. Uh, he was one of uh, the first students, didn't complete the program, wanted to open osteopathy college. Uh, they didn't get along together. He left and he produced, a, he founded the profession of chiropractic. Uh, then the property was, uh, was uh, found, founded by a uh, uh, by uh, osteopath and chiropractor uh, and uh, then some French French osteopaths introduced the uh, manual therapy techniques to the profession of uh, physiotherapy in, in US it is called physical therapy most of the world uh, most of other countries they still call it physiotherapy uh, and uh, uh, a lot of massage therapy has now some techniques that, uh, such as muscle energy technique and craniosacral techniques that ha have roots in osteopathy and naturopathy that uses uh, botanical medicine, herbs and other things. They also have manual therapy techniques that has originated from osteopathy. You can look at uh, that as, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to give you a similar comparison, look at the martial arts, Kung Fu, that originated in India uh, and then uh, uh, as a basic martial arts and then went to China and over there it got expanded to what is now known as Kung Fu that has a lot of techniques from Jiu Jitsu techniques, Judo techniques, uh, Taekwondo techniques, Karate techniques, they all Samurai techniques, swords, fighting uh, with weapons, everything, they all part of Kung Fu. But uh, later on, uh, later on, uh, some uh, some uh, people learned that went to the different countries, uh, focused on some aspect of it, and made new new martial arts. For example, in Korea, uh, they uh, they use the same uh, many of the punching and kicking techniques of kung fu. <coughs> excuse me, but they call it taekwondo. They focus heavily on the kicks. In Japan, uh, they they call, they selected some fighting techniques of kung fu and call it uh, karate. They use a lot of uh, punches, uh, and in uh, Thailand, they use a lot of uh, elbow and knees. Uh, they uh, they call it muay thai, and then in Japan also uh, they use the grappling techniques, call it jujitsu, and some person. Uh, from Jiu Jitsu, we move some techniques uh, instead of more focusing on the groundwork, uh, focus more on throwing technique and call that Judo and so on. The same, but they all have root in Kung Fu. The same with all these manual therapy health professions and osteopathy, they all came from osteopathy, but they, uh, they now focus on different things. Uh, before I became a manual osteopath, I was a chiropractor. I worked for uh, many years as a chiropractor, so I have in-depth knowledge of the chiropractic and osteopathic profession. Uh, and uh, at one time, 
long time ago I had 58 clinics, multidisciplinary clinics offering acupuncture, chiropractic, physiotherapy, massage therapy, psych uh, psychology called services such as psychotherapy and osteopathy. Uh, now I, uh, I founded Osteopathic Chronic Pain Clinics of Canada. We now have 333 clinics in over 30 countries including US, Canada, Spain and so on. So I have in-depth knowledge of uh, many of these health professions. We all, I also am president of National Academy of Osteopathy in Canada, National University of Medical Sciences in Spain and National University of Medical Sciences in the uh, USA, the first school of manual osteopathy. We also offer uh, things like napropathy, botanical medicine, athletic therapy, osteopathy and so on. So through education, I also became familiar with these health professions more in depth. They're all effective, but they uh, each play a different role in the healthcare. Uh, and I try to give you a simplified version of it, uh, so you can understand how the treatments of these health professionals differ from each other. But they all study all the techniques, most of the techniques that uh, they do, but they focus on some other uh, aspect of it. For example, I start with uh, osteopathy. I start with osteopathy and osteopathy is two different type of profession. Osteopathic medicine and manual osteopathy. Osteopathic medicine is basically the same as me uh, medicine uh, and uh, there is basically no difference in, in the United States. Out of uh, over 120,000 osteopaths, doctor, doctors of osteopathy in the United States, oh, I think about 1,000 of them just do hands-on therapy. Their manual therapy systems, I'm not going to speak about other treatments like medication, surgery, and medical care they provide, only about the manual therapy aspect of their, uh, their, their work. Those 1,000 osteopathic physicians in the United States that offer hands-on manual therapy care, they work on treatment basis, not time basis, meaning they don't measure the time they spend, they measure the treatment. And because the insurance system is designed somehow that they get paid per procedure, it is in their benefit financially to uh, keep the time to the shortest amount possible. So what they focus on in their treatments in the United States osteopathic physicians is manipulation. They focus mostly on manipulation. Those 1000 osteopathic physicians that do provide manual therapy, if you get hands-on manual therapy from them, you will see that they mostly focus on, uh, on, uh, hand, uh, on manipulation, on spinal manipulation and uh, joint, joint manipulation. Because, uh, as I said in other videos, whoever pays you, controls you, and whoever pays you uh, changes the way you practice. An insurance company pays per procedure in the United States to the osteopathic physician, so their system of doing treatment differs from others, and they focus on things that are fast and quick. This is osteopathic physicians, so that's what they do. That's what they do. And usually they combine the manual therapy with other type of care they provide. You rarely go to an osteopathic physician in the United States and just get manual therapy. You get manual therapy with other type of medical care that they, uh, they can provide for you that is available for your condition. Now, manual osteopaths. Manual osteopaths are those health, professions, uh, health professionals that they're also known as osteopathic manual practitioners in the United States, British Columbia and other locations. And in most of the countries of the world, they also are called osteopaths. They use hands-on therapy mostly. Most of them just do hands-on therapy and they focus on rhythmic gentle techniques but again as i said 
insurance companies defines and motivates practitioners to go to one route or another. For example, in United Kingdom and Australia, where professional manual osteopathy, which is called osteopathy there, is regulated and is covered by public health uh, payments, which they pay per procedure and they pay a small amount in that, it is financially not feasible for the osteopath there to spend one hour with the patient because they just don't get paid enough to do so. So their, their treatment, the manual osteopaths, which are called osteopaths in UK and Australia and New Zealand, they, they work per treatment, per, per session without measuring time. And as such, their treatments are shorter than uh, manual osteopaths in Canada. Uh, and they focus also a lot on spinal and joint manipulation. When you go to a manual osteopath in United Kingdom and Australia, their services looks and feels a lot like how chiropractors provide services. While in Canada, the way the insurance payment, uh, the way insurance companies pay our students is based on time similar to massage therapists. So our alumni mostly see patients for one hour and they get paid by insurance companies for one hour. And as such, they, they don't, uh, they focus on spending a lot of time with patients. In Canada and US, manual osteopaths are not permitted to do spinal and joint manipulation and therefore they don't do that and they focus on other techniques rhythmic gentle techniques like osteoarticular techniques mobilization soft tissue therapy uh, cranial osteopathy visceral techniques um, positional facilitated uh, release techniques and uh, in case of all graduates manual mechanotherapy we are the only schools in the world teaching manual mechanotherapy which is the last techniques of osteopathy no other school of osteopathy in the world teaches that uh, we brought these techniques back uh, and uh, this is this is what they do as such because we don't do spinal manipulation in canada our malpractice insurance rate is very low between 150 dollars to 250 dollars a year and uh, there is no cases of death, paralysis, stroke, and so on that occurs with, uh, with spinal manipulation. Nothing like that has been registered in Canada. Actually, in the past 10 years, since 2010, that we've been teaching, most of the manual osteopaths in Canada are now all alumni in English-speaking Canadian provinces, and not, there is not even one case of malpractice against them. No cases of injuring the patients uh, and uh, damaging them or fraud or uh, sexual assault or anything like that. There have been a number of cases like that in Canada by manual osteopaths, but they are all by graduates of other schools, uh, unfortunately. So that is what the, the difference, the treatments offered by manual osteopaths in Canada is highly pleasurable. It is pain-free uh, and uh, patients uh, really love it. Actually, there was a research done compared 25 health professions in Canada. Manual osteopaths with a 97% patient loyalty rate had the number one patient loyalty rate in Canada. Means out of 100 patients each manual osteopath sees, 97% remains with that manual osteopath for life. The next one was family physicians at 75% and uh, then I think was uh, at 60% physiotherapists, chiropractors, massage therapists and so on. Acupuncturists were like 30% or so. And those who received manual 
Men all osteopathic care in Canada, they honestly prefer to massage therapy. I had in my clinics always, um, uh, when the patients tried manual osteopathy once, they always wanted to see the manual osteopath and manual osteopaths were waiting, signing sheets was always full, the appointment was always full. That is why in Canada most manual osteopaths are fully booked and they, they have a waiting list of sometimes six months to a year before they see a patient. Uh, they don't usually advertise. If you open a Yellow Pages book, which I don't think they exist that much now, uh, but in uh, yeah, or directory, uh, online directory, you see advertising a lot for chiropractors, physiotherapists, massage therapists, but you rarely see any advertising for manual osteopaths. Most of the patients is from word of mouth. This is because of their ability in treating chronic pain and they see most of their cases are last resort cases and um, and as such they had treatments elsewhere, didn't get help and they come and once they get better they bring a lot of friends to manual osteopaths. Uh, recently I added some uh, uh, Dr. Purgol's osteopathy wellness protocol uh, that teaches osteopaths how to work for with pain-free patients for pleasure and relaxation. As such, now my students have been uh, started to work in cruise ships, Caribbean resorts, and so on, uh, offering uh, services similar to massage therapy for relaxation, uh, relaxation and pleasure, uh, so they can uh, expand and uh, get into different aspects of the market. Now about chiropractic. Chiropract uh, chiropractors focus a lot on spinal and joint manipulation. But what I am telling you is basically on average cases. Of course you can find any uh, exceptions in any cases you can find a chiropractor who spends one hour with patient and so on but what I uh, what I explain is uh, about majority of the cases I know even uh, one of my uh, osteopathy students who spent 15 minutes with the patient only so these are averages it's not for everybody but the, it's for majority of the cases chiropractors they share many of the techniques with osteopathy. A lot of the techniques they use, and, uh, it, it, as I said, it has origins in osteopathy. Uh, PNF technique, uh, for example, uh, came from muscle energy techniques of osteopathy. They changed the name. Uh, physiotherapists changed the name, and then chiropractors took it from physiotherapy. Uh, cranial osteopathy that we do, they, they changed the name, and they call it sacrosomatic. Uh, sorry, sacro-occipital technique, um, positional facilitated release, uh, they call it a, st uh, a, sprain, a strain technique, uh, so many techniques that they change it. Their terminology is even um, osteopath osteopathic in origin, for example, uh, spinal manipulation, they call it adjustment and uh, what they treat they call it subluxation these were osteopathic terms but after chiropractors started using them uh, osteopaths in US stopped using them in, uh, instead of um, adjustment they called it osteopathic, uh, uh, man uh, osteopathic ma manipulative therapy OMT and instead of subluxation they called it uh, uh, lesion or sopatic lesion but uh, all the adjustment techniques that Dr. Palmer uh, provided as a as a chiropractic technique they are all uh, osteopathic in origin chiropractors again focus on HVLA technique high velocity low amplitude technique and many of them even that's the only thing they do in the old time they used to be called straights 
uh, they only adjusted the spine, manipulated the spine, and the others who manipulated other joints and did other services, they were called mixers. Uh, that's mainly what they do, but they, uh, manipulation is very effective in treating acute pain, and uh, chiropractors are very good at that. Unfortunately, manipulation uh, is also dangerous if it's not done correctly and even if it's done correctly in cases of cervical spine can lead to death, uh, death stroke, paralysis and a sort of a, all sorts of neurological conditions and that happens often. It happened in Canada, US and most part of the world. Um, so chiropractor, the difference is, between them is the, the HVLA technique. They focus heavily on, on that and that for some patients can be painful and, uh, and, uh, and it's not such a pleasurable, joyful techniques that patients look forward to it. Uh, but uh, of course, you know, uh, the rate of the deaths and the stroke is extremely low uh, and uh, whenever I talk about that I get emails and messages from chiropractors who are my students tell me they tell me oh but medication has more kills more people surgery kills more people Th those are all true the and I love chiropractic this was my first health profession and I and I, I, I love it but we have to accept the reality, we have to accept the fact that the manipulation, while it's extremely effective for acute pain, it has dangers associated with it. That is why it is mandatory for every chiropractor in Canada, before they uh, provide cervical manipulation to, uh, to patients, they must tell the patients that the, this cervical manipulation can kill you. If they don't say that, that's a malpractice because in the informed constant, they must inform the patient. When I was practicing chiropractic, chiropractic every time I, I did cervical manipulation before it, I had to take informed constant and tell the patient that manipulation can kill you, can cause a stroke for you, neurological damage and so on why it is mandatory because it does happen and it is not a joke it is somebody's son daughter mother father husband wife that can die at the hands of a health professional and sometimes it is done because there's too much force at use and sometimes it happens because it happens anyway because patient has problems um, in, a, in a, her spine that even a little movement would uh, uh, would damage us it is sad but it's a serious condition I personally uh, for many years stopped doing cervical manipulation because I didn't think the risk was worth it. Manipulation is not the end all to all treatments. You, there are tons of more effective, better hands-on treatment available to help patients with neck pain and headache. And uh, even when I was practicing chiropractic, I did not do cervical manipulation for many, many years. That is uh, the main, main difference between chiropractic and manual osteopathy. Chiropractors use uh, spinal manipulation to treat acute pain. They basically try to treat most of the pain chronic or acute pain with spinal manipulation but spinal manipulation is not so effective against 
uh, chronic pain but it is very good against uh, acute pain Manol also but on the other hand use rhythmic soft gentle known force known force techniques as such their treatments are more pleasurable doesn't have risk associated the way a spinal manipulative therapy uh, uh, can uh, damage per people and patients find it more relaxable uh, so also chiropractic treatments because insurance company pays them per session is treatment based not time based they do not time their treatments you can you can't go to chiropractor and say I want half an hour of treatment it's just not something they do you go to them and you say I want a treatment and they provide treatments and their treatments are generally a lot shorter than manual osteopaths uh, for treatments it ranges usually 5 to 10 minutes sometimes 15 20 minutes but that's rare usually 5 to 10 minutes is on average what what uh, a chiropractor will, will do but of course it def depends on the chiropractor how busy they are where they are and so on but uh, the average in Canada is 5 to 10 minutes manual osteopaths uh, who are not my students on average see the patients about 30 minutes half an hour in Canada my students uh, at the National Academy of Osteopathy and my other two schools they see the patients in Canada about one hour I strongly believe in one hour of treatment and that is why my alumni my students are, have such good reputation in treating chronic pain we even get a lot of referrals from other osteopaths other manual osteopaths uh, whose patients did not get better or uh, students uh, treat them for example my student and she was she was um, uh, uh, she, uh, she used to be a member of the Canada uh, so national soccer team and she's very successful has a number of clinics now uh, one of the patients she treated she, uh, she studied online at the National Academy of Osteopathy a, a few years ago uh, one of the patients uh, Mark McNeil this patient had a shoulder pain she, he was a registered massage therapist he went to five osteopaths in province of Quebec in Canada none of them were able to help him and he came to to Anne with one session he got better he was so shocked by the difference that uh, in osteopathic treatment between what Anne did compared to the other five osteopaths uh, in Quebec in Quebec they call osteopaths rest of Canada they are called manual osteopaths or osteopathic manual practitioners and uh, he registered at NAO he, he got the diploma in osteopathic manual practice and now he works for our, our uh, osteopathic chronic pain clinics of Canada in Montreal uh, and this is because one reason is because we spend time or my students spend time with their clients you need one hour to really take care of patients uh, chronic pain it is like exercising have you gone to a fitness trainer and he tell you let's do five minutes of treatment uh, five minutes of exercise or 30 minutes of exercise once a week no most of them they say come one hour three times a week because that's the best benefit you can get and that's why my students spend three times a week for one hour with patients and as a result they get the patients better uh, quickly and the word of mouth spreads and others re refer to them it is not that others cannot do the same chiropractors and others can do the same but simply they don't want to spend that time with the patient because their payment system is different uh, that, uh, that, uh, but they have most of the techniques and know many of the techniques it's just you know when you do five to ten minutes of treatment you honestly cannot affect all the structures of the body uh, when a patient goes for low back pain to my students we do everything 
we work all lumbar sacrum area we move everything there is not one piece of ligament that has not been stretched there not one piece of muscle that has not been um, uh, stretched and strengthened we work on everything and that takes time you simply cannot cannot uh, cannot uh, do it in such a short time I am grateful to God for giving me this opportunity to to help uh, so many patients there are millions of patients that now my students treat and this gives me so much joy so much so much joy and happiness in life knowing that millions of people around the world are now pain free do not need to live with chronic pain because of what I taught to my students and what they are doing. They, uh, they do miracle on a daily basis. D their hands provide miracles. They are true healers. It's a beautiful life. I am really in awe of uh, God. Today I, I was reading and uh, it's just beautiful what God provides for us. God says in all circumstances be grateful and uh, I am grateful like to a simple teaching we can affect lives of so many so many people. This is the beauty of God how it works. It's an abundant life filled with beauty, love, wealth that God provided for us. We just have to go and get our share of it. Okay, now, I explained about osteopathic medicine, manual osteopathy, and uh, chiropractic. Physiotherapy, uh, in physiotherapy, physiotherapists, or as in the US they call physical therapists, they use different types of modalities. They use exercise, to help people and they use manual therapy as i said the, the manual therapy comes from uh, osteopathy they also treat a lot of uh, a lot of uh, physical conditions like chiropractors and osteopath but they focus a lot on physiotherapy modalities by the way chiropractors and manual osteopaths in canada uh, can also use uh, physiotherapy modalities such as ultrasound, electro, electrical muscle stimulation, uh, hot packs, cold packs, laser, infrared and so on in their practices. So it's not limited just to physiotherapists. So physiotherapists focus mostly on that. A lot of physiotherapists, especially before, that's all they did, use modalities for, serv for hel helping people these days now they are doing a lot of manual therapy we have a lot of physiotherapists as students and they incorporate manual therapy but their services like manual osteopaths are time-based mostly you don't go to a physiotherapist saying i want a treatment usually it's like one hour of treatment that they do one hour is a typical uh, physiotherapy treatments in canada uh, but it's a mix of physiotherapy modalities and manual therapy so they don't spend one hour uh, for treating patients hand on they put the patient on uh, usually they see more than one patient per hour they put a patient on the machine a few patients on the machines then they take one do some a few minutes of manual therapy uh, on them then they go to another excuse me excuse me then they go to another patient uh, and do some, uh, remove the patient from machine, do treatment. So they see, they are known a lot to see more than one patient at a time. Uh, I remember I used to work uh, in a physiotherapy clinic and they had 20 rooms and they have assistants. Assistant put 20 patients in the room with the machines. Uh, at one time they would have uh, 20 patients in one hour getting treatment all at once and then physiotherapists go to room by room and do a few minutes of stretching and so 
and so on. Uh, but they don't spend so much time uh, with patients for manual therapy. Most of it is uh, is uh, is uh, physiotherapy modalities uh, that they use. Massage therapist. Uh, uh, but by the way, physiotherapists focus a lot on getting patients back to the normal activities of uh, daily life. They focus a lot on muscles and exercises to get the patient to back to activity level of uh, the physical activity level uh, that they have. Massage therapists, they, there is two types the relaxation massage and the uh, medical massage, remedial massage, uh, also known as massage therapy. Uh, the ones who provide relaxation massage do not need to be licensed in Canada. The ones who provide medical type of massage, massage therapy for pain, they need to be licensed and they, as they are regulated in many jurisdictions. Uh, and uh, massage therapists mainly use hands-on therapy rarely they use any modalities and mostly they focus on soft tissue and and uh, muscular problems uh, using uh, soft tissue therapy techniques but some of them you they use other techniques too but mostly is soft tissue uh, and uh, uh, mus massage techniques uh, to work on the soft tissue Napropathy is a profession originated in the United States. Uh, we teach a doctor of na napropathy program. It is not naturopathy, it's a different thing. It's a hands-on manual therapy technique that works on connective tissue. The founder, uh, who was an osteopath and a chiropractor, uh, thought that most of the problems come from uh, connective tissue, so their techniques uh, include manipulation and other manual therapy techniques but it focuses a lot on connective tissue disorders and doing soft tissue therapy uh, to, uh, to treat uh, a number of musculoskeletal conditions. Naturopathy is a health profession that uses herbs, medication, not medication, herbs, supplements, botanical and medical products, uh, homeopathy and acupuncture and other things to treat conditions. They also use manual therapy, but it's very rare uh, that the uh, naturopath these days they do. Most of the treatment is limited to uh, herbal and botanical part of the, the treatment and nutrition. Uh, you rarely go to a naturopath to get uh, manual therapy done but some of them they do it is rare athletic therapist in US they're called athletic trainers and uh, that profession in uh, athletic trainers in US they are exactly similar to physical therapists they have the same scope of practice they study four years they can do offer medical diagnosis they do phys physiotherapy modalities manual therapy and so on in uh, in uh, in Canada they are called athletic therapists and it is not regulated health profession here they cannot do medical diagnosis they cannot do manipulation and they cannot uh, but they can do some physiotherapy modalities that they they have been trained at uh, they focus mostly on many conditions of the body but focus mostly with athletic sports conditions but they treat everything as a physiotherapist does they also can use manual therapy techniques but uh, they focus mostly mostly on uh, muscles stretching and strengthening exercises as well as using some modalities to to help the patients their focus is uh, mostly on improving uh, athletic injuries and keeping the athletes in shape so a lot of the program uh, is focused heavily on proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation PNF techniques and stretching techniques 
home exercises and so on they don't usually do manual therapy techniques that much like other health professionals they, in Canada athletic therapists are not permitted to do uh, spinal manipulation the same with massage therapists uh, they cannot do chiropractors uh, naturopaths physiotherapists and medical doctors in Canada uh, they are permitted to do spinal manipulations so uh, massage therapists they work on a treatment basis on time base sorry they work on time basis hourly basis or half an hour or an hour athletic therapists they also many of them work on a T uh, on time basis similar to so manual osteopaths physiotherapists naturopaths uh, nap uh, nat naturopaths massage therapists and athletic therapists they usually work on time basis chiropractors and naturopaths they usually work on treatment basis but again these are just general and um, and it's not uh, it's not for everybody in other videos i talked about the financial differences between the professions about their income and uh, that you can watch but uh, i think this uh, video so far gave you uh, a short summary a brief summary of what they do and uh, what kind of uh, things uh, they do what uh, what treatments they provide they all work on musculoskeletal conditions such as low back pain neck pain headaches they all provide treatments uh, massage therapy also provides treatments for relaxation same as some of my students who are manual osteopaths they also provide osteopathic uh, wellness care uh, but uh, chiropractors, physiotherapists, athletic therapists, naturopaths and naturopaths they do not offer manual therapy for relaxation, for pleasure they are pain based uh, systems that uh, provide care for patients to help them with pain or prevent pain and disorders from occurring uh, they are not pleasure based, relaxation based that you go, you just lay down and you get treatment for that is only massage therapies and a small number of my students uh, manual osteopaths they, they provide that that's about it if you have any questions you can reach me on my facebook facebook.com dash dr prugal and uh, I'm available. My email is purgol at purgol.com. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope wherever you are, you please stay safe. Uh, please take care of yourself. And uh, please stay happy and joyful. Uh, enjoy your life even in the time of quarantine now for this COVID-19 health crisis. Do not forget to remain positive, remain happy. I pray for you wherever you are to have a happy, healthy, wealthy life. God is with us and I have faith in God and I believe science and humanity will overcome this, this um, uh, health crisis. Thank you for watching video, this video. I love you all. Bye for now. Namaste.